Hello, for a bit of admin before this actual video starts, uh, this video is again another video that is in partnership with the Times and Sunday Times Cheltenham Literature Festival and they were so kind and let me interview some amazing authors over the course of the festival and this one is an interview with Lainey Taylor. Lainey was so so amazing and just thank you so much to the Cheltenham Literature Festival for the opportunities. First thing is that um, this video, see this, see when I go like this and it zooms in and then it's closed on my face. Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> um, that happened accidentally when I was doing this video uh, and I didn't realise. So it's slightly zoomed. So you can see Lainey 100% clearly the whole video, but sometimes I'm kind of like this. Um, you can still hear me fine and you can still see me and I kind of pop in. There's just like a little bit of the video where you can only sort of see like this much of my face and I'm so sorry. I'm so, so, so sorry. I didn't realise. I was like, so flustered by the fact of like what was happening and like trying to set it up that I didn't realise that I wasn't like that it had zoomed I like must have knocked my camera. The, the interview is fine you can see me and you can hear me and like there's nothing wrong with the quality and it's all in focus and it's absolutely fine it's just sometimes I'm not in a, the frame as much as I would like to be in the frame but just listen to Lainey talk she's the one that's saying interesting things okay cool. The second thing about this is um the Chat Literature Festival gave me these <laughs> There's five here. They are chapter samplers uh, from Lainey's new book, Strained the Dreamer. In collaboration with the Channel Literature Festival, I am excited to announce that five of you can win one of these. Yeah. There'll be five. Five of you can win one. Um, just, I'll do a click to tweet link below and then just click to tweet it and then I'll just choose five winners. Tell me why in the comments why you would love to have the chapter sampler and why what you're looking forward to, what you love about Lena's writing and why you're excited for her new book. I'll keep it open for a month um, and then I will send them all out to you. Lainey's new book comes out in March 2017 and I've read the chapter sampler. It sounds amazing. It's so, so, so good. Thank you again to Lainey Taylor and the Cheltenham Literature Festival for letting the interview happen and for joining me on my YouTube channel and I hope you enjoy the video. Bye! So it's, oh, you get used to it. Oh, look at the lens! <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, Ren here and today I am at the Cheltenham Literature Festival again with Lainey Taylor. Hi. Would you like to just introduce yourself for those of you that, for those of the people that don't know, I'm um, sure most people do. But. I'm Lainey Taylor, I'm author of the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy and the forthcoming Strange the Dreamer. So we're going to talk about your new book for a little bit because I tweeted that I was going to be talk talking with you and everyone was like, talk about the new book, I want to know about the new book. Those are quotes about the cover. Oh, okay. So that was lots of, because yeah. the, there's an American cover and a British mm. cover, what was your sort of input on that? Did you want there to be two different ones? Oh what yeah, so the... so um, I'm lucky that my British publisher and my US publisher, I have like a separate relationship with both of them, um, even though they work together, and so I always have a separate cover. and. Um, they're always beautiful and I love getting different, one of my favorite things is getting like foreign editions in the mail and different editions and seeing what they look like. And in this case, well whenever my, my UK publisher sends me a cover, I always love it immediately, like they have such a sophisticated sensibility and so this one was, was no different. I, I, I had several choices of how the moth would be positioned right. and that was about the level of my input. <laughs> They look amazing, and I'm someone who collects different covers uh -huh. of books. So, like, Me too. It, it completely adds to my collection. I'm like, okay, that's two I need to get when that one comes yeah, out. Yeah. Like, I've got all the covers of the Harry Potters, like all the different ones. Yeah, and... we started with the illustrated editions for my daughter because she's seven, so it's like the perfect age to sort of start again with the new releases. Have you got yeah. just Timber Secrets? One? We just we it's, just started it. Isn't it the yeah. most beautiful oh, thing? So ever. beautiful. So, what was writing? Um, Strange of the Dreamer, like different to the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. How did it? Um, well, it was really different. I mean, in so many ways, and it was really hard. <laughs> like, <laughs> like Daughter of Smoke and Bone started in a way that was really unique for me. Like it was, I was, I was at this point of really sort of extreme distress with a different book I was trying to write that had become so it was it, like was refusing to come together. And I was, I had got to this point where I was forcing myself for several months, and by the time. I, I, I don't give up lightly, and I hadn't given up, but I, I was really demoralized, and writing had become very painful and miserable, and so one day I was like, oh my god, this is too bad, like, I hate writing right now, so I have to have one day to write something else just for fun, Yes. and I sat down, and it felt like it happened really out of the blue, like, I had no idea what I was going to write, I was like, I'm going to write this story, it was just, I sat down, and there's this blue-haired girl, and she was arguing with her father, who was a monster, and there was a wishbone, and there was teeth, and it, it was like... I wrote all day, I think with a smile on my face. This has never happened to me before since it was like 
something out there new I need. I just, really just gave you all of this like love. Yeah, and it was funny because it felt like it was really out of nowhere. But then when I look back um, on my blog for that year, uh, I discovered that a lot of the seeds of it had been in my previous right. writing. That and then had sort of. So it was this case of when I finished my first book, I'd started a writing blog with a, a blogger in the UK actually, and it was like a prompt writing site. Yeah. And um, we would write a short piece every week, and it was like a way to sort of like write short pieces for fun and, and love writing. And um, and a lot of what became Daughter of Smoke and Bone sort of was born in just little snippets through that. So I think it was a really good exercise for me. Um, but it felt then it, like it came out of nowhere. But I, there was preparation. It just, yeah. Um, but with Strange the Dreamer, it was the first time in my career that I ever sold a book on pitch. Um, when I finished the trilogy, I had this like great opportunity. I've been living for five years with these characters, and now um, I can write anything. Like, what do I want to write? And there was this, a couple of stories. There's two sort of main stories, and I pitched and sold them both as part of this contract. And I was like, which one first? And um, and this story had been in my head in a, a vague sort of way for like 20 years. And so then I had to sort of gather it together and. And, and it wasn't it didn't present itself in that like oh the yes. characters are alive here they are and you you know they're alive from the first moment I really had to find them and it was very effortful so uh, I came to love them and know them but it took months versus that one blessed day <laughs> I love hearing about writing processes mm -hmm. because I'm someone who writes as well mm -hmm. and like it's taking so long I just finished my degree so I kind of had that as the excuse of like I haven't been writing yeah. because I've been doing that but as like for me some of the characters that I write about like they just come they just exist like that's supposed to be their name that was supposed to be who they were and then with others it's so difficult that so. never happened to me until I was you know I, I, because I have I have creative issues I'm really, really <laughs> uptight and like perfectionism and like I think I'm holding on so tight that I don't like give them room to do yes. that and so that was really I never believed that that happened <laughs> I thought that those other others were they were lying. What are they talking about? You're just lying to make us feel bad. <laughs> like Sarah J. Mass said like a really good. I um, went to her event last week. She was here and she said it's like radio frequency. Mm -hmm. It's like really fuzzy and then suddenly it just like clicks. Yeah. Um, I just heard something. her in Dublin the other day and um, and hearing her speak was really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The characters in the new one. I don't want to spoil too much because I don't want to give any spoilers away. But the characters in the new one. How did they? How did you feel writing them was different to writing the characters in the Smoke and Bone trilogy? Well, you know when I started writing what would become Strange the Dreamer, the working title was The Muse of Nightmares, and that's a title that's been in my head for a long time too, and the main character was a girl, um, and in a very, you know, she's in the book, but she, and she is also a main character, but um, I had this idea, and she lives in a city that, for various reasons, is very mysterious, and I wanted to introduce the girl and the city through the eyes of a stranger coming there, and so I wanted the boy, who would also be important, to sort of be the character through which you experience which you enter the story and so as I started trying to figure out who he was in order to make that happen like I just fell so in love with him and he really took over and it became his book and so that was really um, unexpected and um, the, I was writing a chapter you know about him to, to figure out who he was and and he's a librarian and uh, on the day that it, I discovered that he had had his nose broken as a child by a falling book of fairy tales which I think you I can, can relate, relate to that <laughs> That was the day that I really fell in love with him when I knew this was his story, actually. And that chapter was called Strange the Dreamer. And I looked at it and I said, that, that's the title of the book. And then I just had to convince my publisher <laughs> who had already <laughs> announced that it was called The Muse of Nightmares. So I like Strange the Dreamer. In the Smoke and Bone trilogy, this is one of the questions that I got asked. Okay. Who is your favorite character? Well, it's hard to, I mean, like, Karu is my favorite It's like, character. Usual, like, it's yeah. like picking a child, yeah. isn't it? So it's a difficult question. But. I mean, I think Karu had to be, like, she was so the emotional core of the book that she had to be my favorite character. But there were other characters who were easier to write when they would come along. But because their role was different or was less critical. Um, and Zuzana was always really fun to write. And she was really, uh, really important. And I didn't realize that until I started writing Days of Blood and Starlight. And it was so dark. And... I had set myself up to write such a dark book and I, I knew I didn't want it. I had read a book recently, a YA book that had that was very dark, it was a sequel, and it, it had gotten to a place where I didn't want to even pick it up and go back to that place. And so I knew it was a sort of a cautionary tale for me. I don't want to write that kind of book. Like I don't want to I want it, I still want it to be fun. Like I need to honor the like the darkness that I've created here, but also make it be fun to read. A good so, mix is good yeah, sometimes because I feel like that's what it's like in life as well. Exactly. So. And so I said I I know the way to do that is to have Susanna in it. <laughs> So that she can bring humor into the story, even in any situation. And so I had to figure out how to get her into the story and keep her in the story. She's fun so. to read as well. Yeah. When, when you read it, she's Good. really like, 
she does keep it. Thank kind of you. Like going Thank you. Um, so she was so important. Do you prefer dialogue or like the story kind of building and telling what you're writing? Uh, you know, I, it's a hard question to answer. Cause I used to be really afraid of writing dialogue, and um, I, I think when I first started really seriously writing, I've kind of re written all my life, but what I would call writing was more like world building or taking notes about the story, but not actually writing. And when I when I finally started writing what was my first book, Blackbringer. Um, I had a really hard time crafting dialogue and I, I later discovered it because I didn't know the characters yet and they didn't have anything to talk about. I was trying to create dialogue out of thin air without anything important for them to talk about. And I, I realized that once the story is happening and they have things to talk about, it happens really naturally and now I think the dialogue is like really the heart of the book. It's the place where the characters are the most alive and it makes the most direct connection to the reader. Um, but it, and, I, and I think it's... I mean, I love writing descriptive writing too, and I love being narrative, but I think dialogue is so important. Um, I, love, I love them both equally, and I think they're both super important. I've written, done a little bit of script writing, and I, I, um, it's easier in a way, but I, I miss the narrative opportunities that it I have. It brings it all together, I think. I just yeah. finished reading Cursed Child, and I feel yeah. like... Yeah. Because I went to see it as well, but then reading it, I read it first, and it was just like, they did this, they did this, they did this, and while it was good to read, like you needed that kind of story as well, so then going to see it and seeing like it be built, brought to it, life. Just, it was yes. like a novel being brought to life, so it just made so much exactly. more sense. Exactly, like, yeah, to the story. so I've read, I've read part of it, I haven't finished it yet, but it, you, know, you get into the groove and it, it gets really yeah, easy to you read, do, but yeah, you, you do, do have to inject so much, you have to bring so much to it that, that the director will have brought to it when you see it yeah. on stage. And, Finally, just um, one of the things I was saying about your new book, just sort of, what is it about? Just a, a rough synopsis of oh, it. I haven't Everyone's had you like, talk about it yet. <laughs> are you allowed to talk about it? I yeah, am allowed yeah. to talk about it, I just don't know how. <laughs> no, so I mean, so the only, I have written cover copy, I can't remember what it is, but it's it's like that or Smoke and Mountain, it's really hard to describe. But I think that what I would say about this is that it's, it's uh, set 15 years after there's been a war between gods and men, and men won, and they executed the gods. and. Uh, and all their children, um, their half-caste human children, and um, some of the children have survived in hiding. And uh, so it's the story of this young librarian and one of the children of the gods who's hiding and how their stories come together. It's yeah. good. It's very good. The chapter itself <laughs> was really good. Thank you. Um, and we actually have some to, after the event happens today, we have some spare ones to give yes. away. Yes. So that's going to be a thing. Some of you guys are going to, so I will put a link below to where you can like click to tweet to win and then I'll let you know who's won. The book comes out in March in 2017. It's amazing. It's so good. Like oh, I was, when I was you. reading that I chapter, read I was book. just like, yeah. I want the rest of this. I, <laughs> I don't tend to read them. So I was like, I know I'm going to want more. And then I finished it and I was like, yeah, like, I, need, I need it now. Uh, I'm in that weird place where like nobody really has read it outside of the publishing house yet. I'm, I'm, it doesn't feel really real yet. So yes. no, that's, that's good. So thank you for being here. I will link below to like the pre-orders for um, Lady's New Book and her other books and all of her links and stuff. And obviously all of my links will be down there as well. Thank you for watching. Thank you thank for being you. here. And I will see you next time. Bye. High five the camera every time. <laughs> yeah, one day I'm going to hit it too far. <laughs> <laughs>